So my dear friends, we are almost at the eve of the 75th independence of our country and also the feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. I think these are auspicious moments and for us very specially to celebrate these days is not only an act of affection, an act of duty, but also something that matters to our country and our faith. Let me first begin with the, the message of this weekend, which we hear in the readings of today. Uh, the readings of today are very special, perhaps a little unconventional, so much so that Jesus is challenging us we are used to goody goody messages to do good and not to harm others. At the same time, we cannot be fence sitters, the ones who compromise our values. There are three words that are used in the gospel which are very strong. The first word is fire. The second one is baptism. And the third is peace. And as I said, all three of them uh, acquire special meanings in today's readings. First of all, fire. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, Jesus says, I have come to put fire. We know what is fire. And this fire that burns, as it were, everything that is evil, that is everything that is hidden in us. And therefore, this fire consumes us and at the same time, the fire in us gives us energy to surrender ourselves to God for greater things. Uh, secondly, as I said, the baptism. You know, the real meaning of baptism is not only pouring of water, but immersing ourselves in the water as such. And what happens when someone is immersed in the water? He dies. And therefore, baptism for us means that we die for ourselves and rise to a new life. The baptism also washes away our sins and prepares us for a new life as a child of God. And thirdly, we also have the word peace mentioned in today's readings. Peace, as we know, is everything quiet, everything silent, everything peaceful. But what peace, Jesus means, is not just this, what we call the outward peace, but inside harmony, the inside. Perhaps the peace that comes to us through fire and the baptism. And Jesus says that my peace is such that it will unsettle some people, that it will cause a little of confusion in some people, because when we want to do this, we want to do that, we have no priorities, and many a time when we perhaps have nothing to choose from, we will be trying to satisfy everybody. They say when you try to satisfy everybody, you don't satisfy anybody. And so Jesus says strongly that the peace that I give you will unsettle you. Perhaps even in your own families, the father against the son, the, the sons against the father, the mother against the daughters, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law. Meaning to say, when you make a choice, when you may choose your principles, surely you have to disturb this order because you are choosing ultimately for God. And when you choose, choose for God, you have real peace in spite of not having any other, perhaps, things that would matter you. My dear friends, perhaps God gives us today a very special message that we can't be sitting over the fence, this side, that side. I go to the church also and I would like to do the other things also. I would like to be say that, uh, that I am good, but I am not so good as itself. So my dear friends, perhaps we ask the Lord today to live a genuine, uh, important, 
and very often perhaps a committed Christian life. It's difficult, but let us ask God for His grace. I go to today what we call the Prison Ministry Sunday. The, we know what are the prisons. We know the prisoners. We know their life. Many of them perhaps they have been accused. Many of them perhaps they have done wrong and they suffer or rather they are given a punishment for their wrongdoings. But it could be that there are many of them who are trials, under trial and for no fault of theirs they are there. And so the prison ministry takes in itself all these characters who are behind the prisons, who are suffering, who are wanting to be pardoned, who are perhaps sometimes are there for no reason of their own. And in this way, the church tries to organize them, tries to help them and especially to your families. The prison ministry is celebrated closer to the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe and this particular saint who died in the the concentration camps in Germany and the other countries of the East, of the West. And this saint is remembered because he sacrificed his life in order that someone else could escape or rather be brought out. In fact, someone had escaped from the prison and the prison authorities wanted to punish 10 prisoners because of one prisoner who ran away and when he heard the cry of the prisoner, especially the one who said that I want to live, he offers himself to die in the place of this prisoner and therefore that is how he becomes, he has become the patron saint of all the prisoners. So I would request you to be generous and to perhaps not only to contribute to the welfare of the prisoners and their families, but also if chances are food and you get a chance to go to the prisons, to visit the prisoners, please do so in order to listen. And surely that's one of the great virtues that Jesus himself has mentioned in the gospel, to visit the prisoners, we visit Jesus himself. I now go to what we call 15th of August. It's a beautiful day. We are happy to celebrate freedom year and in our lifetime and I must congratulate everybody and say happy Independence Day. As we know, out of much trouble, struggle, the freedom fighters who have got us this privilege of celebrating the freedom of our country and therefore we have to remember the sacrifices of our forefathers many of them who died in the prisons, many of them perhaps who were killed, many of them laid down their lives for the country. And we remember the great Mahatma Gandhi who led this freedom movement as it were, in order to help us to get the freedom for our country. I was just seeing that we Christians also have been part of the freedom movement. I saw this beautiful article in our Tabor magazine, edited by Father Adrian Maskernes, which speaks of the four women who played a role in the freedom struggle. I know there are many men, but there were even women who, perhaps Christian women, who played a great role in the freedom struggle. Father Adrian has mentioned Pandita Ramabai Saraswati, Akkamma Cherian, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, and Violet Harry Alva, who happens to be the mother-in-law of Mrs. Margaret Alva, who was one of the candidates for the vice president recently. As I said, these women and many men, Christians, have also been part of the freedom movement. The other day, someone sent me from KGF a list of people who were on the Dandi march at the Quit India movement, meaning to say our Christians were also perhaps part of this. And we are, may not be, all may not be aware of them. In fact, I am encouraging the scholars, the Christian scholars and the others to document and perhaps write articles on the 
freedom fighters from the Christian community who are part of the freedom movement. I wish you once again a very happy Independence Day. Let's remember that famous quote of Rabindranath Tagore, Into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country arise. The Church also on this day, as we celebrate the independence, we are also fortunate to have the celebration of the Assumption of Our Lady. The Bible perhaps doesn't speak of it, but the Christian tradition says that Mother Mary was taken up to heaven by her son Jesus after her death. And therefore, this particular fact of her being assumed into heaven is called the Assumption of Our Lady. Perhaps it's a feast for us, a very special one, and that we are celebrating along with our independence means also much to us. That Mary is part of our Christian tradition, our faith, and surely perhaps we can also compare as Mary who has achieved her freedom in the, and liberation in the real sense so that she is assumed into heaven. We also wish everybody a very happy feast of the Assumption of Our Lady, 15th of August. The Church makes a little contribution on this day, perhaps a collection on this day all over the country and especially in our diocese. There are different days, perhaps the other diocese will make the collection, but we in our archdiocese make on 15th of August, keep aside the collection that we make in our churches for what's called the Communio Fund. The word Communio means all of us in communion with each other. And since it's a national day, the church in our churches encourages to contribute towards the missionary endeavors of our missions and missionaries all over the country. As we know, we have many mission territories in India taken care of by the priests, sisters and the other associations, institutions and many of them surely since being missionaries and poor areas, they need our support. And therefore the collection that is made on 15th of August in our Raj Diocese called the Communio Collection goes for this purpose in order to help the missions and the missionaries all over India. I now speak about a new topic, a different topic, what's called the elect electoral list or the citizens who have to enroll themselves for the voting, for uh, representative voting, political voting in India. You know, every time there's an election, the election card is requested to be shown and the one who have the election card have a right to vote. And since the elections come once in three years, four years, we are told that perhaps soon our elections of next year, that's 2024 for the national level, 2023 for the Karnataka level, and this year perhaps for the corporation level, there may be elections. So it's our bounden duty to vote. But we should also see that we have the voting card with us. Many a time, perhaps some have not bothered to check and some may be lapsed. Some may be the voters list, the names may have been not there. Or perhaps in some places, it could also happen that the address has changed, the person's name has changed, something like that. So it's better that we check what we call these voter cards voter IDs and therefore we have kept a, a seminar in our Palana Bhavan. At the same time we encourage every parish to organize this what we call the voter checking ID cards exercise perhaps after every Sunday Mass. If there are some youth who know how to come, how to perhaps check these ID cards on the computer, on their mobile. There are apps now which are available and this would be a good exercise for the people in order to give them once again the spirit of this country to vote for our own representatives, our leaders. And therefore I request everybody of you, first of all, if there is a possibility with some friends or someone known who knows this app, 
to check on the computer on the mobile itself whether your voting card is in order those who have not perhaps made their cards this also is another chance to make a new voting card and for that also there are certain forms and certain formalities to be done and surely i'm sure the people will help you i have requested that every parish two or three who are who know how to utilize the computers and check the details be sent here to the palna bhavan in order to train them as one who can help others to check their voter ids let me now go to the questions as usual there are three questions here i read out the questions the first question is what is marriage preparation course the second is what topics are usually covered in the marriage preparation and the third why are there no post marriage courses for married couples example those married for more than 5 years and above as you know and as you see this is about the marriage and the marriage preparation the family etc it's uh, beautiful to say that our christian couples are called upon to prepare for marriage marriage is an important step in our life perhaps if for smaller things if we prepare for small exams we prepare to go out for a picnic we prepare to perhaps to build a house how much more should we prepare for a marriage because marriage is a, a two persons coming together and willing or making their intention to stay forever as long as they live together it's not just one person but two persons are involved so therefore who is the other person how much do i know her or him how much perhaps i do i expect what's my role and responsibility what are my expectations there are so many things that to be considered and therefore for marriage preparation for marriages preparation is necessary important because it's the most important step in our life we normally speak of three types of preparations the first one is called the immediate preparation immediate preparation you know immediate preparation is i'm getting married perhaps after some time or within a month or within a few days and therefore i prepare the cards i prepare the liturgy i prepare the flowers i do the invitations and i am there for the marriage immediate we call it the second one is the proximate and the proximate goes a little more behind perhaps when people start thinking about marriage and surely perhaps looking for partners who should be my partner in marriage and we sort of prepare ourselves am i of your temperament can i perhaps live with you what are your interests and therefore the boy and girl together deciding to get married in a proximate way perhaps perhaps one or two years before they go for the marriage preparation courses they do the things that are necessary for their marriages perhaps they even try to look for a house so that they can live independently they try to check their jobs to see that whether it's stable etc so this is a little behind and far away we can also speak of what's called the remote preparation for marriage what is remote preparation remote preparation is perhaps the parents when the children are small enough or growing they prepare them for their future responsibilities and therefore they give them values of family life they teach them perhaps what be a boy looks in a girl a girl looks in a boy and both of them to be have this healthy attitude as they grow up so that they themselves looking at their own parents distantly prepare for marriage so distance wise i would call it first of all the remote preparation it's a remote it's a far away you know it's a remote control it's kept distantly and you can control to the device remotely and therefore the parents and the others perhaps prepare the children for this marriage step in marriage which is called remote the proximate is when the couple perhaps have seen each other have decided to get married and they plan in a distant way how they would start their married life as i said marriage preparation course the catechesis the liturgy etc also forms part of this remote, of this proximate 
marriage preparation and the third is the immediate everything is decided everything is fixed perhaps on the day or day before or a, day, a few days before how we go about our marriage sacrament that's called the immediate marriage preparation and so the marriage preparation course that we speak of is done in the second stage namely proximate stage when the boy and girl know each other we encourage them to come for this marriage preparation course and in this course that is conducted by the family commission of our archdiocese father sunny richard is in charge of this commission it's mostly these courses are conducted on weekends saturday and sunday from saturday morning till sunday evening and what are the things that perhaps that are spoken of there first of all what is marriage what are the steps perhaps to get ready for marriage the psychological and the physiological setup of man and woman even perhaps we speak of the sex the family staying together and then the other aspects the psychological aspect how they can be compatible how perhaps they could resolve their conflicts how perhaps finance also plays a part in the marriage because they have to arrange each other they have to support each other and therefore the financial planning budgeting the psychological planning the compatibility the characteristics of man and woman which are which are complementary and at the same time perhaps sometimes may differ and finally also what is marriage itself and how we get ready so all these things are taken care of in the marriage preparation course through talks through discussions through certain exercises so the couples we encourage both the boy and the girl to come together for this marriage preparation courses so that together they can sit and plan also perhaps some things that they escape there are times there are certain things that come to their people come to know the marriage the couples come to know and surely sometimes they have even mentioned and said that after learning from the marriage preparation course we feel that we are not meant for each other we can remain as friends but not as marriage so these things or these realities come to the fore and we help the couples in order to plan together so that's called the marriage preparation course now there's a question here we can understand the marriage preparation course is given before marriage but what about after marriage perhaps that's also another question that should be asked the marriage preparation course that comes sorry before marriage it surely prepares the couples for marriage but after marriage when they start living the hard reality of the boy and the girl husband and his one perhaps they also are blessed with children and the other connecting problems of the parents of the god pair of the in-laws of their house of their job of interacting with others and so there are many also perhaps ticklish problems that come after marriage and this also has to be handled this also has to be tackled and therefore what we call this particular part after marriage is necessary and we encourage the couples perhaps in 5 years 10 years 15 years even the jubilarian couples to come together and to review their life to see perhaps what they can still go back to and improve their relationship with each other we make efforts and the family commission is open to have sort of a seminar or we get together of the couples who are married for 5 years 10 years we have made announcements in many churches for the couples to come but i am sorry to see that many of the couples don't respond i was told that the family commission has kept in one parish and the couples were called perhaps some even registered but in the end only two couples turned up and there were five or six resource persons more resource persons and less participants it does happen i would request that if there are certain couples who can take initiative arrange in your parish perhaps the young couples 5 to 7 years whatever it is and the family commission with the dear experts and resource persons will be very happy to share with you perhaps what are the challenges of married life so my dear friends i'm happy to wish you once again a very happy independence day and the feast of our lady of the assumption have a nice weekend and the extended holidays and joyful perhaps the occasions that you get please celebrate 
and the government has requested us to have flags in our places in our houses and not only on the independence day from 13th to 15th but remember independence day is not just one day it represents for us the spirit of india that means that we have to be available for our people that we have to be honest that we have to be sincere in all our dealings and serve the country i wish you well my dear friends please do share your feedback your impressions and your experience or send a message to the email address as you find on the screen archdblr at gmail.com and you also have the phone number the mobile number wherein you can send your message or uh, whatsapp on this number archbishop is ready and waiting to answer your questions if you have any question any doubt any uncertainty or there's no clarity upon something you can ask those questions and with the discretion that the archbishop will surely answer these questions in the weekly feature shepherd's voice thank you and we look forward to the next episodes